how psychic cold readings are done, don't be fooled. A cold reading is a technique used by some fortune tellers, psychics, and other individuals who claim to have extrasensory abilities to obtain information about a person without any prior knowledge or information about them. It is often used as a way to convince people that the individual has special abilities or insights. This video will discuss how cold psychic readings are done. It is important to understand how cold readings are conducted. This can help protect you from a fraudulent fortune teller or other purveyor of fake psychic wares. Real psychics shouldn't need to use cold reading techniques. One of the most famous cold readings in popular culture is from The Wizard of Oz. Dorothy is running away from home when she runs into the professional psychic, Professor Marvel. The psychic asks Dorothy a series of questions and he changes his approach based on her reactions to his queries. When he has her inside his wagon, he asks her to close her eyes. When she does so, the good professor looks through her basket to find more information about Dorothy. He then uses this to craft his reading for Dorothy. Here are some steps for performing a cold reading. Gather general information about the person. You can ask for the person's name, age, and perhaps their occupation or general background. This will give you some starting points for your reading. In the age of the internet, this is even easier. If the person doing the cold readings has time to research the subject in advance, a lot can be determined before meeting. This helps when making predictions about the person during a reading. Finding information online can be an invaluable tool when conducting a cold psychic reading. There are many sources of online data that can help you understand the energy, feelings and emotions of your subject, as well as their personal history. For example, public records such as birth certificates or marriage licenses may provide insights into family dynamics. Social media accounts can give clues about current relationships and interests, while blogs or websites might provide hints about spiritual beliefs or values. By leveraging all available resources when researching a subject before a session begins, you'll have deepened understanding of their journey, which will ultimately lead to a more believable reading overall. When conducting a cold psychic reading, it is important to observe body language and other nonverbal cues. Pay close attention to the person's posture, does it appear relaxed or tense? Are their arms crossed or open? Their facial expressions can also give you some insight into what they may be thinking or feeling. Look for any signs of discomfort, confusion, surprise, etc. Additionally, watch for subtle gestures such as tapping fingers on the table or shifting positions in their seat which could be indicators of internal unrest. All these small details can provide valuable clues about an individual's thoughts, feelings, and personality that would otherwise remain hidden. It is important to make sure that the statements you make during a cold psychic reading are general enough that they can be applicable to many people, yet specific enough to feel personal. You should strive for a balance between the two. For example, you might say something like I sense that you have been feeling overwhelmed and uncertain about the future lately or I see that there is an intense desire within you for success in your career goals. These are broad and general enough to apply to many people, but still provide a personalized touch by addressing topics such as feelings of uncertainty and ambition. Obviously, these should be based on what you have already learned about the subject. When making educated guesses, use your knowledge of human psychology and sociology to try to understand the person's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. For example, if the person is young and single, it is likely that they are looking for love or exploring new relationships. They may have a strong desire for companionship or an interest in dating. Additionally, you might guess that the individual has certain insecurities about being single and could be feeling lonely at times. Furthermore, their age can be indicative of wanting to explore different experiences with a new romantic partner such as trying out adventurous activities together or going on romantic trips away from home. When conducting a cold psychic reading, it's important to pay attention to the person's reactions as you make statements. If they appear to confirm what you've said with facial expressions or verbal agreement, then you can use that information and build upon it. However, if their body language or words indicate disagreement with your statement, then adjust your approach accordingly and consider moving on to another topic of discussion. This will help ensure an accurate cold reading while also preserving the comfort level of the individual receiving it. When conducting a cold psychic reading, it is important to be vague and open-ended in your approach. Rather than making specific predictions or statements that can be easily disproven, use language that allows for interpretation. For example, instead of saying you will find love within the next six months, say something more open-ended like your heart may soon experience joy. This type of language leaves room for interpretation and avoids any potential embarrassment if your statement is proven wrong. Additionally, allowing clients to interpret the messages they receive can help them gain insight into their own lives and experiences without putting the psychic on record for having actually predicted anything. 
Cold reading is a technique that involves manipulating and deceiving people into believing the individual has supernatural or psychic powers. Using these techniques while pretending to have psychic powers is wrong and unethical. People should not engage in this activity except as fun activity with the subject knowing what's happening. If you are concerned about someone trying to conduct a cold reading on you during a fortune telling session, here are a few things you can do. Keep your personal information to yourself. Avoid giving out specific details about your life, thoughts, feelings, or circumstances. The less information the fortune teller has to work with, the harder it will be for them to conduct a cold reading. It might be best to give the fortune teller a fake name for your first appointment so they cannot look up information on you online. Be aware of nonverbal cues. Pay attention to your own body language and try to be aware of any cues you may be giving off unintentionally. Avoid giving away information through your facial expressions or gestures. Don't confirm or disconfirm the fortune teller's statements. If the fortune teller makes a general statement that could apply to many people, don't agree or disagree. Instead, remain neutral and don't give them any additional information. Be skeptical. Keep in mind that cold reading is a manipulative technique that relies on trickery and misdirection. Don't take everything the fortune teller says at face value, and be willing to question their statements or claims. Find a reputable fortune teller. If you want to receive genuine psychic or spiritual guidance, it's important to find a trusted and no fortune teller. Look for someone who has a good reputation and who is transparent about their methods and abilities. Remember that a legitimate fortune teller should not need to rely on cold reading or other deceptive techniques to provide insights or guidance. If you feel that someone is trying to conduct a cold reading on you, it may be best to terminate the session and seek guidance elsewhere.